Climate change is the biggest threat to our species and our planet today. The reasons for climate change in the post-industrialization period are anthropogenic, that is caused by human activity. In the last 168 years, the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere have increased by 40% from 280 parts per million in 1850 to 400 parts per million in 2017. This is the first time in recorded history that carbon dioxide levels have shot past the 400 parts per million mark. Meanwhile, 2017 was the hottest year on record without an El Nino boost, with the average global temperature rise of one degree centigrade higher than the pre-industrial level in 1850. As we are fast approaching the warning limit of 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming set by the International Paris Climate Change Treaty, the change in global climate will be sweeping and devastating. Many small islands will be wiped out, deltas and coastal cities will be submerged. The glaciers in the Arctic and the Antarctic are already melting at alarming rates, leading to a whirlwind of severe climate events. Floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, snowstorms, scorching summers, droughts and wildfires. 200 living species of plants and animals are going extinct from our planet every single day. In short, life on Earth is in peril in a way it's never been. The Paris Climate Accord signed by 195 countries suggests that along with sustainable living, the world needs a renewable energy revolution. All forms of renewable energy, solar, wind, bio, ocean, need to be explored, commercialized and deployed locally. Unlike fossil fuels, which have a positive footprint, renewable energy is a carbon neutral fuel that does not increase the carbon dioxide or greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere. Scientific projections show that the global temperature rise may be held below 2 degrees centigrade if the world's carbon dioxide storage in the form of bioenergy increases to 21% by the year 2050 and 56% by the year 2100, with a global target of 200 exajoule of bioenergy production per year by 2050. 22 countries in the European Union which together provide 80% of the world's public funding on clean energy research and development, have created the Mission Innovation Platform during the COP21 summit in Paris to collaborate and accelerate the world's clean energy revolution. The Mission Innovation Program plans to sign the Delhi Declaration on Clean Energy in February 2018. Governments, scientists, Entrepreneurs, citizens from around the globe must come together, hold hands and pool in their resources, intellect, energy and intention to build a clean energy future for our planet. It is a beautiful planet, the only one we know that is capable of creating and holding life, that very precious thing. Let us come together to save the, save the earth, save ourselves and our children and the children of every worm and mammal and plant that still quiver with life on our beautiful blue planet. Let's go green on blue. Welcome to the Bioenergy Lab in the Department of Chemical Engineering. Uh, this lab is uh, working on biofuels, trying to make biofuels out of lignocellulosic and algal uh, biomass. Uh, this lab is funded by the Picasina Center for Bioenergy and the DBT Pan ID Center for Bioenergy, which are the two different bioenergy centers we have at the IIT at at Kharagpur. The Picasina Center for Bioenergy focuses on lignocellulosic biofuels, while the DBT Pan ID Center for Bioenergy focuses on algal biofuels. And that is the focus of this lab, both lignocellulosic and algae, which means that we're trying to make transportation fuels, liquid transportation fuels from lignocellulosis, which are leaves and dead plants. And we're also trying to make it out of living uh, plants which are algae, uh, which I'll show you later. So these are my students and very, a very warm welcome to this lab. Let me show you around. So second generation lignocellulosic biofuels are usually very popular around the world because they are from non-edible sources. And in India especially, they're a necessity because the Indian biofuel policy, which was framed in 2009 by a committee chaired by none other than the then Prime Minister, decided that you can absolutely not use any food sources for biofuels. So in this lab, which comes to work both in lignocellulosis and algae, we focus only on non-edible sources for biomass to, to be converted into biofuels. So one of the non-edible sources that we have used in our work till now is sunlamp fibers. Now, the problem with some of these non-edible sources 
process of biomass that they, they are not amenable to be broken down into biofuel precursors because something like uh, sanem which is used as a bast fiber which means it's very strong it has a very high cellulose content that makes it a great candidate for biofuel to be converted into transportation fuels to fight climate change and global warming but the problem is with the high cellulose content also comes the fact that these cellulose chains have very long polymeric chains they have a degree of polymerization of 650 which means that those are the 650 bonds you have to break down from one polymeric chain to release a glucose which is going to be converted into biofuel or bioethanol plus they have very high crystallinity this for example has close to 80 percent crystallinity which means that it's even higher to be, harder to be broken down with this comes the low porosity so all of these things makes sun and very interesting fiber is a very interesting candidate reason because it is high in cellulose, but also high in crystallinity, also low in porosity, and high in polymeric chain, chain length. So conventional processes, we've tried conventional processes, we've been working on this for quite a bit now, four years now. So we tried all conventional processes, then they but they completely failed. Then we came up with a new technology, which is based on a microwave reactor. So this microwave digestion system that you see over here houses 16 tubular microwave reactors like this which are run at high pressure and temperature. So what we do with these sun fibers is that we first cut them into little pieces like this and then we grind them into a powder that looks something like this. This white powder you see over here is something that the sun looks like fine. Then we pour this white fiber into this these high pressure reactors and mix them up with something like ionic liquids which are solvents which are going to Put, uh, dissolve the thing in and catalyst and add some water in there and then we run these reactors for a period of time now how long is it going to take for a conventional process to convert sun hemp into biofuels and we're not even going to get a lot of it uh, if you use an enzymatic method nothing less than one to two days if you use a normal catalytic method something between eight to ten hours but a process that takes a minimum of eight to ten hours in a catalytic process is being reduced the process time is being reduced by us using these microwave reactors to just 46 minutes and we can optimize the temperature and the pressure and, the, and get the best yields that are possible. What I mean by best yield is that we can control the product distribution. The good thing about sun -Hemp is that you can make bioethanol out of it if you go the glucose route, you can make biodiesel out of it if you go the, through the HMF route, the methyl sulfuryl route. So depending on what we want, we can tweak the temperature and the pressure and get that particular product. So this is one of the things that we did in the microwave and it just took us 46 minutes to be able to convert these to microwave precursors and then follow it up with a biofuel bio production process. Converting these sun and fibers into biofuels using microwave takes, as I said, takes a very short period of time. But why this difference? Why a process that takes so much longer outside? It takes such a short time in, in a microwave. The reason being that when we make the concoction using the catalyst and the uh, ionic liquid and the water and these sun and fibers in the reactor and put them into the microwave, they form a large polar molecule. These large polar molecules are usually called supermolecules, they're very large in size. Now as you know that in a microwave reactor there is a change in polarity, the, electro, the electromagnetic uh, radiation in the microwave, it changes polarity millions of times per second, so if these large polar mol supermolecules that are there in the microwave reactor will ro rotate under the polarity, uh, changing polarity of the microwave millions of times per second. This is going to generate enormous stress on the bonds, the polymeric bonds that exist inside this, uh, inside the cellulose molecules of this, in the sun and fibers. In addition, there is going to be a lot of cell, uh, molecular collision in the reactor that is going to generate a lot of heat. And all of these things put together, the generation of heat, which is going to increase the temperature, uh, reaction, reaction kinetics or the reaction fastness of the reaction and in addition to that the stress that comes in the bonds because of the dipole rotation. So both these effects together are going to put an enormous stress on the molecule and they're going to break them down very very quickly. That is why we get a tenfold decrease in the reaction time for, for converting them into biofuels. Now not just sun and we have tested this methodology on many other very difficult to break down lignus cellulosic material. For example this grass that I'm holding in my hand is something that we collected from the IIT Kharagpur campus and uh, most of these things. The sun and by the way was given to us by ICAR, the Indian 
Council for Agricultural Research, Sanam is grown abundantly all over the world in the subtropics and the tropic, tropical regions across the world. In India, it's grown almost everywhere in North India. And the Sanam that we collected and used is from West Bengal, as I said, given to us by Ankar. The, these grasses, for example, are just collected locally from our campus. These, again, are very, very rich source of cellulose, very great candidate for biofuel production. But again, the problem, they're highly crystalline, very low porosity, very high molecular uh, chain length, and therefore very hard to be broken down. But when we use the same technology just that I just described using the microwave reactor, we can break these down in 36 minutes, which is even 10 minutes lesser than what we use for Sunem. And even softer grasses like Rizinus communis, Bambusa bambus, they just take around 15 minutes. So the advantage is that if we want to commercialize this technology, uh, of converting sun amp and other materials into biofuels using these microwave reactors, we may not even use just a single biomass source. We can put all our biomass biomasses into one place, into the one reactor, mix them up, and and convert them to biofuel precursors. The advantage is that my reaction time will not go above 46 minutes. The maximum it takes is for sun amp, which is 46 minutes. Everything else is lower. So I think this is a great candidate. This whole not just Sanem as a biomass source, but other kinds of grasses and this technology put together, both of these, they make a great collab ally uh, for converting to biofuels and the commercialization of the process in India across the world. We have already filed a patent for this technology uh, so that to facilitate uh, commercialization, but we also published the results recently uh, in a journal so that everybody can understand and see the read the details of what we have done and use the technology. Shobhik Kumar Pal is a PhD student in my lab who has been working on this problem for a little more than four years now trying to convert sun hemp into biofuels using the microwave based technology. He first started working on this during his master's, he did his MTech here at ID Karapur with me and uh, then continued on the project during his PhD. So it's been an enormous struggle of around three, uh, three and a half to four years almost to be able to come where we have, to be able to create a technology that we could patent and publish and all that stuff. And so these are the sun and fibers we are using in our experiments. First, the sun and fibers are cut like this, and these cut sun and fibers are put in a mixer grinder. After mixing, we uh, pass it through this uh, mesh sink, and it looks like one this powder formation. And this powder we used finally for the uh, catalytic experiments. So, these are my microwave vessels we are using for in, we are using for our experiments and we like we are putting this first I'll put the sun and fiber around 100 mg in the microwave reactor and then I'll put some catalyst which will react with this sun and fiber and form supramolecular structure. This is my catalyst. We are pouring in the microwave reactor and some ionic liquid. These are my uh, solvent we are using in my experiments. So around 3 grams of ionic liquid we are using here for our catalytic experiments. So I'm putting that one. We are using some amount of water in our experiments. So after putting all my solvents in the microwave reactor, we will start my microwave reactor. So these are my this is my microwave reactor. We are going to use this one. So first we will open the lid of the microwave reactor. set our program. So, these are my 
temperature conditions that is uh, experimental conditions we are setting this at 120 degree centigrade temperature at 10 bar but do not take 10 bar it will take around 5 bar and I hold it for 5 minutes with 60% power supply then after 10 minutes it will come to at 160 degree centigrade temperature and hold it for 5 minutes and the power supply will be 80% and next after the 180, 160 degree centigrade temperature it will goes down to 50 degree centigrade temperature and I will hold for one uh, for 10 minutes over here so maximum it will take around 40, 45 to 46 minutes so now we start the process so the experiment is now going on if the first graph is showing the temperature profile and the second graph is showing the pressure profile and here in this bar chart the, it is showing the temperature and pressure here whatever it takes that means we are setting some pressure and according to the experimental needs it will take their own pressure so after 46 minutes the, our experiments will be uh, completed and we can measure our precursors like glucose, HMF, LA and FA after the reaction. We are using 16 of these high pressure microwave vessels in the microwave reactor and this is substrate cyanide fiber is put it in the microwave reactor for our catalytic conversion. And for example, 1 kg of cyanide fiber gives 756 gram of cellulose and 595 gram of glucose at 160 degree centigrade temperature and 203 gram of HMF at 180 degree centigrade temperature at 46 minutes and 595 gram of glucose is converted to 230 gram of bioethanol and HMF can be converted to biodiesel and ionic liquid we are using in our experiments is recycled for cost effective commercialization. We at IIT Kharagpur are collaborating across departments at the PK Sena Center for Bioenergy in our mission to replace fossil fuels with renewable energy, reduce greenhouse emissions and combat global warming. At our DBT Pan IIT Center for Bioenergy, IIT Kharagpur has joined hands with four other IITs to collaborate on fundamental as well as translational research on second and third generation biofuels. Come join us. Be a part of our journey as scientific collaborators, as funding partners, as startup entrepreneurs, as research fellows. Let's share a goal of saving this planet from the climate disasters looming at us.